Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Van Wert High School, where tonight in a WBL showdown, the Van Wert Cougars welcome in the Wapakoneta Redskins. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Dar Nevergall and our entire WSN crew. And, Dar, we've got two big-time teams from the WBL here. What's most intriguing, Wapakoneta comes in only giving up 11 points a game, but Van Wert averages 42 <laughs> a game. It's the immovable force versus the unstoppable objects or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> but if you flip it on the other side, too, Van Wert also comes in giving up 30 points a game right, too so right. you know that's a uh, opportunity for Walpa Kinetic that's why to take we work well together that. that's right <laughs> so you got those go flying back and forth yeah Walpa Kinetic coming in at two and two and two and one the WBL you know Van Wert coming in at three and one two and one the WBL and that's a very tough league the WBL is so you know you never know what to expect from these two teams and our, our pregame sponsor tonight is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac the area's premier Chevrolet and Cadillac dealer in the greater Lima area serving Lima for over 100 years we are proud to call you home let's take a look at the keys for the game for the visitors the Wapakoneta Redskins well for Wapakoneta and, and coach Travis Moyer Travis says we got to win the line of scrimmage that's going to be big for them against this big Van Wert team the other thing is eliminate the big plays, and that's one thing Van Wert does throw a lot of. Like we said, they're averaging 41, almost 42 points a game. They throw up a lot of big plays. you got to stop that from happening. And the last thing for Wapakoneta is they got to execute at a high level in all phases of the game, not just offense, not just defense, special teams as well. they got to be on their game tonight against a very, very good Van Wert team. And for the Van Wert Cougars, what is the key for them to hold serve on their home field? Well, turnover battle. you got to win that one for sure, and Wapakoneta – Van Wert does a good job of that. You know, they've got a plus on the plus side in turnovers and ratio. And then they've got to win the tackling battle as well. And that's not, that's breaking more tackles and also, you know, being able to not miss tackles as well. That's going to be key against Wapakoneta. And the last thing is win the big play battle. You know, they need the big 20 plus yard pl plays. They want to get those, as many as those as they can. And like I said, it's a very, very good team. You know, down the road on both of them, you got, you know, you're, the, Van Wert Cougars first in team rushing in the WBL, you know, and they throw up a lot of passes as well. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting game tonight. It's going to be interesting to see how Van Wert and Wapak match up. It's Van Wert, it's Wapak and Edda. We've got all the action right here on WOSN. We come back, we'll have the opening kickoff. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. Our premier sponsor for Van Wert tonight is Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. And our premier sponsor for the Wapakoneta Redskins, the Side Rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Dar, I look at this, both these teams, and you want to talk about some star-studded players. The two linebackers from Wapakoneta are just fantastic. Reese Schneer and Joey Truesdale, and you look at Van Wert, Gage Steeman, the, the, the defensive back, and Aaron Reichert, the linebacker. They, these are really good players out here. Oh, absolutely. Right? And Steeman, he's the, the leading inter, you know, as far as interceptions goes in the WBL. So their secondary on both these teams are great. You know, two good quarterbacks out there, and Parker and Moyer uh, for Wapakoneta. And, you know, I just, you know, look out here. It's a beautiful night for football, yeah, right. too. I mean, my lens well, is going to be cooling off a little bit and just perfect for everybody. Not only the quarterbacks, the linebackers, you look down on Wapakoneta's side, and Kyle Beach, by some services, Dar, they've got him a five-star. He is incredible with that leg. Yeah, yeah, and it's unusual a lot of times in, in the high school level to have a kicker right. and punter yes. doing both duties at the same time. You know, so... You know, I, I expect a really good game here. It's going to be interesting to see how Wapakoneta goes up because they have a lot of younger players on the Wapakoneta squad as compared to Van Wert. Van Wert's offense is completely seniors. So it's going to be interesting to see how that matches up. So we are just about underway. Wapakoneta will kick off. You're going to see Kyle Beach. And uh, I was going to say, I don't uh, believe goodbye. they'll get to return that because he usually kicks them completely out of the end zone, which he does right there. So Van Wert will start out on offense. They will be led on the field by quarterback number seven, Braylon Parker. He's 68 to 111, 10 touchdowns, Dar. Here's the significant part about this young man, no interceptions. He knows how to take care of the ball. And he can run the ball as well. If you look down, 94 carries, 569 yards on the ground, averaging about 142 yards rushing. That's pretty impressive for five games. <laughs> that is, and absolutely, and seven touchdowns on the ground for him. When he airs it out, his number one target is Connor Campbell. He's got 379 yards, 32 catches already, and four touchdowns. So here come the Cougars as they'll go two wide on each side. They've got a man in motion. 
Parker's going to keep it himself. He's going to run off the left side. Here he goes to the 25, to the 30. He's got a seat. Look He's out, to the 40. Out. He's to the 45, to the 50. He's to the 45. Taken out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. And there you see Braylon Parker with the speed and electricity. And he is the leading rusher in the WBL, and you see why. You know, he gets on the outside like that, finds a little crease on the outside, and they're going to go speed up offense right now for Van Wert. They're not going to waste any time. Yeah, I was going to say, the Cougars are fired up, and they're coming right at it. That is another frost roofing first down. Parker's going to sling it out, and he's going to keep it himself. He's going to go off the left side. He's being pursued and taken down. The ball fumbled out of bounds. And there you saw number 64 for, excuse me, for Wapakoneta. Caden Ware takes him down. Almost a horse collar like tackle there. Almost, almost. But, you know, Caden Ware, you know, 24 tackles this year. You know, he's got two tackles for losses and three sacks. So he's a presence on that Wapakoneta defense as well. That'll bring up second nine with 11.21 to go. Still zeros in the scoreboard. Danny Ulrich, Darn Everball from Van Wert High School. Here's Parker in the gun. He's got a man in motion. He's going to throw off to the right side. He's got his man out there. Kind of a little bit of a lateral back behind the uh, offensive side there. And uh, picked up about two yards, not much. That's uh, Connor Campbell. We talked about him already. That's number 33 on the catches for the year for that young man. And tackle there by Nate Metzger for uh, Wapakoneta. And so Connor Campbell's the leading receiver in the WBL. So you got a lot of leading team, sure, you know, individual absolutely. players. So here's Parker in the gun. He's got trips to the left. He's got a single receiver to his right. He's got one back in the field with him. He looks over to the coaching staff for his instructions. 10.40 to go here in the first period. Beautiful Eggert Stadium here. Eggert, excuse me, Eggert Stadium here in Van Wert. Parker's going to look down. He's throwing the ball into the flat. He's got his man up there. That's Campbell again. And a nice reception to about the 26-yard line. There you saw the connection between Brylon Parker and Connor Campbell. And a nice place to put it in. You saw the walking at a, you know, cornerback playing kind of a little bit back off of him, getting a little bit of a hole right there. And he was able to put it right in that little area right there. That's another frost roofing first down as the Cougars keep on the attack here. And this is Parker again. He's going to keep it. He's going to go right up the middle in a huge hole. And he takes it to about the 15-yard line. And the official was knocked down. Let's hope he's okay. He got hit pretty hard there on that play. Oh, that's one thing. You're, you're supposed to be an official, not part of the play. <laughs> right. He tried to get <laughs> Somebody, out of the way. Yeah, he, he got in there really quick, and he said, nope, we're not done yet. <laughs> hurry up offense there, and the officials are having trouble getting out of the way. Parker's going to hand the ball off. They'll go off the right side. A gain of about three yards. That's number eight, Kelton Bill with the carry. So the, the, no let up in this Cougar offense. No, absolutely not. And like I said, they averaged about 42 points a game, and you can see why. They're going to keep this thing moving you know, keep the momentum on their side of the, of the ball and just keep running it or passing it to get down the field as quick as they can. Our red zone sponsor tonight is B&B &B Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of experts at B&B &B Auto Repair. Here comes Parker again. He's going to keep it himself. He'll go up the middle for about two yards on the carry, and they just continue to put that pressure on the Wapakoneta defense. Now they got a big, big front line there for Van Wert, and he's running right behind him. You look at the number 71 there, Carter Price, you know, a senior, six foot, 275 pounds, and if you can run over that guy, you know, good luck if you're on the defensive side. <laughs> Here's Parker in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. He rolls to his right, looking downfield. He's going to throw the end zone. He's got a man up there. And oh, a nice, nice deflection by number 22 for the Skins, Jared Mullen. That, my friend, is a nice play by a defensive back. Certainly was. He, he made up some ground really quickly on, you know, from where he was at to get his hand on that. But if you notice that pass there by Parker, nice little sidearm you it know, was, throw yeah. like that. You know, look like Patrick Mahomes out there for a minute. <laughs> Dude, you're right. You're absolutely right. So here we go, third and five from the eight-yard line. Cougars trying to punch it in the end zone here early in the first quarter. Parker's going to keep it himself to go to the right side. He's got an opening, and he's going to get there for another cross roofing first down, or he's real close to a bar. It looks like he picked it up. Jason House did a nice job of just, you know, stopping the TD, the TD right there. Our first down sponsor is Frost Roofing, family owned and operated for over 95 years. Join the Frost family. They're an equal opportunity employer car, 419-739 roof. So here's Parker in the gun. He's got two to the left, two to the right. 848 to go here, tied at zero. Here comes Parker. He goes up the middle. He's got a little feet. Did he get inside? And he did. Touchdown, Cougars. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Al Woody Diner and Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. There you saw the whole thing on display there, Dar. Running, passing, you name it, they did it. Well, they kept it in the hands of their quarterback pretty much the whole time, and you know, just other couple running plays outside of that. But 
You know, they gave it to Parker. He just did his job going down the field in the first place, getting down inside the 20-yard line, and then just kind of working it in until he got the touchdown. Good blocking up front for him. Absolutely. Our first call sponsor tonight is Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate or a bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit like lake.right.edu to apply today. So the officials are talking to the coaches right now from Van Wert. Not real sure what they're talking about. Um, he's, I think he's told him to stay back on the sidelines maybe. I'm not real sure. But uh, we'll see if we can't find out what that's all about. We got Griffin McCracken in there to do the kicking. They're going to call a personal foul against the Redskins. So here comes the extra point try for the Cougars. McCracken, a sophomore, 5'6", 130 pounds, 20 for 21 so far on point afters. Two really good kickers here tonight. There's the extra point. Is that oh, it blocked. is blocked, and it is blocked by the Redskins. Our extra point sponsor tonight is Lee Kinzel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. So with 8.43 to go, the Cougars take the opening kickoff. They drive down the field. They put it in the end zone. They lead 6 to nothing. We'll have more high school football when we come back. What's up, Welcome back to Van Wert High School. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And all those great instant replay shots by our crew tonight, sponsored by Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. So, Dar, we saw it all in this play. Now, Wapak and Ed is going to bring a little different vibe here to the offensive side. They run the ball, and they're a little more smash mouth than they are putting it in the air. Yeah, they certainly are and you know I think I uh, blocked PAT with like Caden Ware by the way you know number big number 64 for Wapkinetta but yeah you're gonna see a little bit of difference you know which is probably a good thing for Wapkinetta because sure. they need to keep that offense oh, for Van goodness. Wert off the field as much as possible so if you can run it down there and just run out a lot of plays keep the you know moving the chains get down there and then put some points on the board it's gonna be to your advantage in this kind of game. Jace now and Grant Jolly back deep to uh, receive the kick from Van Wert Kicking the ball for Van Wert. Number four, Landon Frieden will kick it away. High spiral goes down the field. This is Jace Nouse. The tailback comes to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Gets a break, and he goes down about the 31-yard line. And that's where the Wapakoneta Redskins will take over. They are led by sophomore quarterback number two, Caleb Moyer, on the season. 541 yards, 54 of 72, four touchdowns, and three interceptions. He is the coach's son. He is a master technician when it comes to running this offense. He knows it inside and out. Yeah, you're going to need that, particularly against this defense for Van Wert. Like I said, the Van Wert defense has given up almost 31 points a game, so they're kind of porous when it sure. comes to that kind of thing. But if you can pick them apart, you know, which is what Caleb Moore is going to have to do, you know, like I said, be methodical about it. Move yourself down the field. You don't have to rush anything. Here comes Moyer. He's going to keep it himself. He goes off the left side, and he's going to pick up maybe a couple yards. Number five, Gage Steeman on the tackle. So with 8.23 to go, Cougars lead 6 nothing from Van Wert Eggers Stadium, a beautiful facility. They've got a capital funds project going on here, and you can see all the wonderful work they put into this, and it is an absolutely beautiful place. Oh, it is, and you're looking straight from where we're sitting, straight yeah, down. That's a beautiful shot. Down the line, yeah. you know, downtown. So here come the Redskins. They've got a man in motion. Moyer's going to give the ball to Nouse. Nouse goes off the left side. He gets a little bit of a crease, and he is a load to take down, and he's going to get another frost roofing first down. But it hold. looks like there is a flag down, and that's right in the area of holding. So let's see what they go. Right down by 54, Morgan Bingham. Bingham. They have not given us a signal or an indication yet. Let's see what they call. I'm assuming that's holding. It's that's hold where it was, the, uh, I saw yeah. him right away, you know, referee was seen holding right off the bat, which is interesting because Wapakoneta is the lowest penalized team in the WBL. It, so Jace Nouse is their go-to tailback. 357 yards this year, 60 carries, so he is the workhorse, three touchdowns. And then when they throw the ball, they like to give it out to number 10, Grant Jolly. Significant news from Grant Jolly. This week he committed to North Carolina State University on a baseball scholarship, so we know he's a heck of an athlete. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, you know, and, you know 26 catches this year already, averaging about 70 yards 
per game. And there's Moyer as he fires his left side as he shoots it out to number 11, Caden Page, the 6'1 sophomore, catches the ball for a gain of about two yards. That'll bring up third and 17. Boy, those holding penalties just kill you. They do, they do. Like I said, you know, Wapkin has the lowest, you know, as far as penalties in the WBL so far this season. That's only their 17th penalties in five games now. You know, Caden Page is going to have to have a really big game here for Wapkin, because they know everybody's going to key on Jank and Jolly. Grant Jolly as much as they can. So Moyer in the gun. He takes the snap, looks down the field. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man out there. And a no, reception. Oh, my goodness, Dar, you called it. Grant Jolly with the catch. An unbelievable catch as he goes up, high points the ball, and brings it down to the 45-yard line. Yeah, good positioning by Jolly on that one. He was in front of uh, Parker out there, the defensive, playing defensive back for Van Wert. Had good positioning, went up high, pulled that one down. You know, 27 catches now for that young man. <laughs> That's a good combination. Oh, man, I, I'll take that one any day, you know. <laughs> so Caleb Moyer puts it on the money. Grant Jolly goes up and gets it at the 45. That is another frost roofing first down. Here come the Redskins on the attack. Moyer's in the gun. He's got one receiver to the left. He's got a single back in Nels. Tight end goes in motion. He's going to go behind now as he goes off the left side, looking for a block. He gets a nice block out on the side, but a great oh. job by number five, Gage Steeman. And you talk about him being that leader on the defense, Dar, and what a play he made. Yeah, 31 tackles this year so far. 11 sold, 20 assisted, two tackles for losses, and three interceptions. A young man is everywhere in the backfield for Van Ward. So 6.06 to go here. Clock continues to run. Cougars lead 6 nothing from... Eggers Stadium here in Van Wert. Danny Homer, Dar never golf for WSM High School Football. Week five, Dar. We're halfway through the season. I know, isn't that something? It's amazing. Moyer's in the gun. He looks across over to the coaching staff to get his instructions. He's got two to the left. He's got a single set back in Nels. He's going to take the snap. He's going to hand the ball to Jace Nels. Goes off the left side. Looks for a block. It's a gain of about three yards. Now, what's important about that, Dar, is that's not effective right now. But later on, as Nels starts to wear on these guys, those are big gains. Oh, yeah, they are. And, you know, nice, nice little play there on second down. Got him three yards off there. Trying to test that outside Absolutely. corner a little bit, see what point. they can get. Yep. You know, and, and then go the other way if you have to. Good Wap tackling Kineta. out there, too, by Van Ward. Wapakoneta comes in averaging 24 points a game, giving up 11.2 a game. And the Moyer with 135 passing yards a game. So not a high-flying offense, but he is effective. Here's Moyer in the gun, looks across the middle. He's under no pressure. Now he starts to roll. He's got a man out there, and he just misses the big tight end. Number 85 for the Skins, and that's Grant Hauser, the 6'5 junior. Yeah, he was getting some pressure there by number 54, Morgan Bingham for uh, Van Wert. Fourth and six for the Redskins. Fourth and six for the Redskins from the 41-yard line. So they'll punt the ball here. Punting the ball for the Cougar, or excuse me, for the Redskins, Kyle Beach. Average is about 38 yards a punt, but he's going to try to put this one somewhere inside the 20. So Beach, oh, Beach I thought he was going to keep it. <laughs> kind of fooled a lot of us there as Beach goes coffin corner. Oh. And a nice job by that young man of putting it down at about, as Steve Horn goes to the 15, 16, 14, 13 yard line. So a great pump by Kyle Beach, and there you see the explosive foot of that young man. Now, like I said, he's averaging about 38 yards a punt, but he can also get a little bit of finesse there, be able to put it right there where you need to put it. Now the Wapkin defense has really got to tighten up. They got to really key on Parker and not, you know, Braylon Parker and not let him get to the outside like he was able to on the first drive. So get ready for Van Wert's second drive of the afternoon here as they lead six to nothing, 4.53 to go here from Eggers Stadium in Van Wert. Here's Parker in the gun. He's got three to the right, two to the left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down by pick Whoa. number 57, Jaden Rampula. I'm telling you, these linebackers for Wapakoneta are really, really good. Well, that's the sixth tackle for loss for, for that young man to, so far this season. And throw in four sacks along with that as well. <laughs> Great big defensive line for the Redskins as they try to keep this high-powered offense at bay. Here's Parker in the gun. He's going to look out, looks across the field. He's going to throw deep down the right side, and it's going to be picked off. And it's picked oh, off by yeah. number 22 for the Redskins, Jarrett Mullen. My goodness, he's been everywhere tonight. Yeah, he kind of lofted that one up a little bit, you know. And 
I think it kind of, you know, if you watch the Bam Ward offense a little bit, when, when Parker's going to run the ball, they spread it out. They spread guys out all over the place. That one there, you saw the, the receivers in tighter more on that offensive line, and he, and he threw the ball. But nobody was able to get down there in that area right there, and Mullen just was standing and, there. And there, Dart, you know, when Wapakoneta came out to punt, there was quite a few boos from the Wapakoneta crowd, and they were you know, upset because they were punting in their territory. But there's a perfect example of yep. why they did that. They forced Van Wert into passing situations. Well, absolutely. And you don't want to give Van Wert no, you know, field position in any way, shape, or form in this game. So here's Moyer in the gun. He's going to throw the ball out. He's got Jolly out there at the 35. So he takes it up to about the 31 yard. Line. Yes. Nice job there by Grant Jolly. You're going to see that connection all night. Yeah, and that's a play that, you know, Van Wert kind of playing off of a little bit. We'll let you catch that and see if you can get two or three yards on it, but we're not we're not going to let you break off a long oh, we, one on We us. talk about it all the time about certain plays set up certain plays as the game mm -hmm. goes on. That's exactly, that's a great point. So the Van Wert defense, as you mentioned earlier, gives up 30 points a game, so they are susceptible to the big play, uh, but uh, we'll see if they can't hold this Wapakonet offensive bay. Well, they give up 415 yards per game as well to go along with that 30 or 30 points. Moyer's going to keep the ball himself, goes off the left side, and that is a heavy pursuit by the Cougar defense Ooh. and a big-time tackle by number 30 for the Cougar, Aaron Reichert. We talked about Aaron Reichert already tonight, the big linebacker, 30 tackles already this year. Yeah, a junior, five foot ten and 200 pounds. You talked earlier before going on the air. Uh, talk a little bit about the senior-laden team of Van Wert. Well, you know, that was the thing that jumped out at me when I was looking at, you know, getting ready Doing for this homework, game yeah. was, you know, all seniors on that starting offensive, you know, unit for Van Wert. And that, you know, that says a lot for what they're doing out there because, you know, that's very veterans, experienced. And here comes Reese Schneer, the big linebacker, turned tailback here as he goes across the – about the 25-yard line for another frost roofing first down. Now, when you get into their defense for, for Van Wert, then you throw in some sophomores, juniors, that kind of thing. But on the offensive part of it, all seniors. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So here come the Redskins, first and 10 from the 27. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to throw the ball off to the right side. He's got a man out there. Oh, he there gets he away. He's, He's going to go to the end zone, and he is going to. Did he get in? Yep. Yes. Touchdown, Skins. Caleb Moyer finds number 11, Caden Page. That's your guy, Gnar. That's the guy. You said he had to have a big game, and right on cue, he does. That's his second touchdown of the season, and nothing bigger than, than this one right here to get Walpaw back into the, the swing of this in this game here. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Al's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta. Wapakoneta's best place for pizza wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. So they've tied it up all at six. Here comes Kyle Beach for the extra point. Our Lee Kinzel extra point is up, and it is good like it always Ooh. is for Kyle Beach. So with 2.17 to go, the visiting Whopper the Redskins come in to Van Wert, and they take a 7-6 lead. We'll have more high school football when we return right after these messages. Welcome back to Ager Stadium here in Van Wert. And uh, just a little bit ago, we were talking about this rivalry series between Van Wert and Wapakoneta, and that game last year, unbelievable on a block punt. So, you know, that's got to be going through the minds of some of these kids. Oh, sure, absolutely it is. You know, I mean, everything in the WBL is rivalry. Oh, my isn't goodness, it? isn't it? You can go right down from the top team to the bottom team, and, and there's rivalries all over the place. You know, there's a big rivalry game going on, I think, Bath and Delight in there right, as well. Right, right, so. a lot of big rivalries. So. That whole sequence, Dar, was set up by the punt from Kyle Beach, pinning Van Wert deep, forcing them to throw the ball. They get a big turnover. They take it in for six. Yeah, and turnovers is a big thing, you know. You, and that's one thing Van Wert wanted to win the turnover battle, but right now they're losing it. So there you see Kyle Beach <laughs> kicks it to Delphus. <laughs> Good golly. Uh, I had him, uh, fellas, I had him two weeks ago, uh, walking in an OG, and every kick was completely, it wasn't. It didn't touch grass. It was completely out of the end zone. And uh, some college is going to get that young man, and they're going to get a dandy. Oh, yes, they will. <laughs> absolutely. And, and kicking and punting it. It's such an underrated thing oh, when you absolutely. think about it, but it's so huge in a game like that. Well, the punt that he did, we were talking about earlier, right? The pin Van Wert back there, you know, those kind of things that, you know, are play big dividends for teams. So here come the Cougars. 
This is Parker in the gun. He's got Bill back there by him. He hands the ball off to Kelvin Bill, and he goes up the right side. And a nice gain of about nine yards. So there you see Kelvin Bill, the tailback, 185 pounds, and he uses all of it to get up the middle. Yeah, tackle made by Joey Tuesdale there. Second one from the 29. Here come the Cougars on the attack again. They'll fake the handoff to Bill, and Parker's going to be taken down for a loss. Maybe, maybe again, gets it back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's going to bring up another big third down at third and one from the 29-yard line. And there you see big Caden Ware comes from his defensive end position and takes down the quarterback. Well, Caden Ware did two things on that one. He took the quarterback down, then he picked him up and set him back up on his feet. <laughs> I saw that. So that. I saw that. Here comes Bill up the middle, and I don't know if he got it. That's going to be awful close. The official's walking in behind the sticks, and I don't think he got it, Dar. So this is going to bring up a big fourth down for the Cougars. And this is an interesting series for uh, it sure Van Wert. You know, all three runs just basically, you know, off tackle and up the middle. I mean, nothing, and, and nothing prior, fancy. Yeah, prior to that, they've been flinging the ball around the yard, but they get a little conservative here. So now we're at fourth and one for the 29. Does he go for it? Let's see what he does. Uh, they're going for it. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> hey, this wide receiver out here thinks we're going for it. I'm not going anywhere. And you just wonder if they're going to try to draw him off sides. With a hard no, Parker's going to keep it himself. Oh, and look he, out. Did he get yeah, it? That's I think going to be real close. And John Derryberry has got his arm in the air, and he's saying, first down. So a big, gutsy move there by the Cougars, and they get a frost roofing first down. Woo. And went the 29 yard line, Dar. Yeah. That's guts. <laughs> and went the same area spot as well. That's right. Here comes Bills off the right side. He goes back to the middle. And oh my goodness, a collision between him and Reese Schneer. And Reese Schneer is everywhere right now. Him and Joey Truesday are a man in that middle, and they are knocking some heads in the middle. This is an interesting series here for, yeah, they for haven't Van Wert. The they haven't thrown the ball at all. They've not done anything but run off tackle. They haven't run any sweeps or anything like that. Here comes Parker. They've got Bills in motion. Parker's going to fake the handoff. He's going to keep it himself, go up the middle. And obviously the coaching staff likes the matchup up front because that's the fifth run in a row there for the Cougars. Well, there's no doubt that you look at Van Wert's, you know, offensive line and they're, they're pretty good sized oh, boys up absolutely. there. You know, Van Wert's not small by any stretch, but I think Van Wert has the advantage. So let's see what happens here. End of the quarter. End of the quarter. End of the first quarter. So after one quarter from Van Wert High School, the visiting Wapakoneta Redskins come in, and they got a 7-6 to six lead. We'll be back for second quarter action. Right after these messages. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. Tonight's first quarter sponsor, excuse me, second quarter sponsor, the Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. So the Cougars, Dar, come out just running the ball, no throwing the ball, and keeping it on the ground, and an effective offense right now. Yeah, well, they're moving the ball down the field. That's the biggest thing we're on right now. They're facing a third and three on this one here, though. But, you know, nothing fancy at all. And not compared to the first series that we saw them where they were running, you know, off tackle, but they were also running sweeps around and also throwing the ball down the field. Here's Parker in the gun, third and three. He's going to throw off to the right side. And oh, a nice great catch. catch. An unbelievable catch by number three for the Cougars, Connor Campbell. He had to go up and high point it with one hand, and it almost caused him where he couldn't move real well. And the Wapakoneta Redskin comes in, and we're going to get a punt situation. Yeah, he was off balance when he caught that then. And you know, gave Walpaw plenty of time to, to react. But, <laughs> I can't believe he got that. But that was a good catch. I mean, you know, a little stick them on their hands yeah, right. there, right? You're going to get to see that on our instant replay. Our instant replay tonight is brought to you by Binkley Real Estate, an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and an extensive network that will get you results that move you. So here's the punt. And it will be fielded by Wapkinetta at about the 28-yard line. They'll go up the right side looking for some blocks, and they'll go out of bounds. That's number 11 for the Redskins. Caden Page, that's your guy, Dar. He's everywhere He is. Tonight. I'll tell you what. <laughs> He's only a sophomore, too. 6'1", 155 pounds. Well, I'll tell you what. You, you don't get much better coaching than head coach Travis Moyer no, and Keith Rector. Both not. these squads just so well coached. You're not going to see a lot of mistakes out here tonight. These guys are buttoned up. Week five of the season, they're both going for playoff implications. So this is this is the kind of football we need to see. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, and they're, they don't penal, you know get penalized a lot. Their turnover ratios, they're, they're both on the plus side on turnover ratio. So, yeah, you know, good fundamental football. 
And some creative stuff out Absolutely. there as well. First and 10 from the 45. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to throw off to the left side. He's got Grand Jolly out there at the 45. He'll go to the 50 to about the 48-yard about the line. There you see Grant Jolly. Another reception there for the Redskins. He's got a lot of receivers, but his primary guy, Grant Jolly, he'll go to him. He's got 26 catches on the year, 281 yards, and one touchdown. So you got to believe that, you know, Grant Jolly, if he's like a lot of receivers, he wants to get in the end zone. Well, absolutely. And, that, and that's why I was saying earlier on when it came to Caden Page, you know, Caden Page has to have a big game just to open up sure. Grant so Jolly on that point. other side. And, you know, if, if you've got to worry about Page out there, you're going to take your eye off of Jolly a little bit. Moyer pump fakes there and he goes, goes. down the right there side. He's he got him. He's got Caden Page all alone. He catches this 25 to the 20. And my goodness, that's a and big game for the Redskins. That's another Kate frost roofing first down. And Dar, if he'd have threw it a little bit farther, I think he'd have walked in the end zone. But you know what set that up, Danny? Number one out there, you know. Grand Jolly. Grand Jolly standing up here around the 30 yard line or so, you know. He faked that, he pump yep. faked it to him, and Caden Page was back here by himself. So here come the Redskins with 10.20 to go. They'll take it over first and 10 from the 19-yard line. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Jace Nouse off to his left. He's going to throw to the right side towards the end zone, and he's got Caden Page out there. So right now, Caden Page is a nightmare matchup for the Cougars. And Page came in with just 13 catches coming into this game, and he's already got, what, four or five? Four catches, yeah. And, and it's been a huge part of this uh, offense right now. So that'll make it second and five from the 14th. 9.51 to go here until halftime. Danny Holberg, Darn Evergall from Eggers Stadium here in beautiful Van Wert. Brand new uh, facility here and uh, just a beautiful, beautiful turf here they're playing on tonight in great weather conditions. Here comes Jace Nouse off the left side and he'll be taken down by number three for the Cougars, Connor Campbell. That's a smart little play right there for Walk. Just get it around the edge there. Give it to your running back. Let him pick up a few yards. Kind of test the waters on that left side. Tonight's premier sponsor for Van Wert is Leland Smith Insurance Services. Your first call for your insurance needs. And for the Wapakoneta Redskins, the side rail in Wapakoneta, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. Third and two from the 11. Here comes Caleb Moyer. He's got Jace Naus in the backfield. And also back there, Reese Schneer. He's going to hand his Naus off the right side. He's looking for blockers. And he's going to pick up another frost roofing first down. So there you see some tough yards, Dar, from a big tailback. Yeah, and you can tell you're going to have a running play on that one there because Wapkinetta well, brought in number 81, who normally is a tight end for uh, Wapkinetta and yeah. Ryan Sadler over there. <laughs> brought in the beef, didn't they? That'll bring up. First and five from the five-yard line. 8.32 to go. Wapakoneta leads seven to six, looking to put up two scores here for halftime. Moyer's going to go underneath center. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man oh, up. And a touchdown by number 35, Reese Schneer, as he goes in for another Owls Woody's Diner touchdown. So with 8.17 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins put another six on the board. They lead 13 to six with an extra point try by Kyle Beach. Just running right through that right side. Boy, a big hole on that right side there. Yeah, yeah they found big something. Big number over there, 76 didn't they? Yeah. over there. You know. <laughs> They're going to run behind this guy. Let's talk about those big guys up front. Landon Miko, uh, excuse me for off, for Caden Ware, Ryan Price, the big guys, Grant Hauser. And there's Kyle Next Beach with nine, another nine, Lee nine, Kinzel nine. extra point. Lee Kinzel on over the road, man. We're take a look at our pre owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. Late 17 to go. The Lock on Redskins lead 14 to 6 right here on WSA. Welcome back to Eagle Stadium here in Van Wert. Where with 8.17 to go, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 14 to 6. Dar, I know it's early in the game, but does this change the offensive game plan for the Cougars? I noticed last series they did not throw the ball, uh, and it kind of hurt them there on that. It did, and, and I was a little confused, but I'm not the coach. <laughs> I was just saying, we're not coaches. I'm not coaches. Keith Recker knows you know, a whole so lot hey, more than we do. <laughs> that's right. So maybe he saw something, sure. and that, you know, that he wanted to try to, to do in that second series, but 
you know, they've got to they got to throw the ball. There's no doubt about it. They got to keep it in you know Parker's hands, let him do his thing. You know, kind of spread this Walpaw defense sure. out. Don't try to go up the middle against them all all night long. You know, and we'll see what they do on this this particular series here. I don't know if that interception kind of you know sure maybe you maybe know, dial it back shy. a little bit. Yeah. And there you see Kyle Beach takes it to the five. Uncharacteristic for him as it'll be brought up on the left side of the field, and they'll go out of bounds. And uh, yeah, you knew that was coming. There was a yep. late hit there. Uh, they had number two, Reese Krug, with the carry, and he gets knocked out of bounds, and there'll be a 15-yard flag on that one. Now, you know, the, the, the thing about this rivalry in these two teams, nothing dirty. That wasn't a dirty play. That no, was aggressive no. football. There was a big pileup over there. Guys are trying to take him down, so uh, nothing dirty about that. No. And you kind of lose track of where you're at out there on the field, when, sure. particularly when it comes to the sideline. You don't know how, you know, am I inbounds, out of bounds? Well, Dar, I'll tell you, if there's anybody left in Wapak or Van Wert, I, I'm going to be amazed <laughs> because this place is absolutely packed. And we're on the home side, and we uh, have a great vantage point of the Wapakoneta crowd. That ble those bleachers are completely full. There's people around the stadium on the fence. The home stands are completely full. So a huge crowd for a beautiful night of Week 5 high school football. Here come the Cougars as they'll try to run off the right side, and nothing doing there as Parker hands it off, and Bill's taken down by Metzger from Wapakoneta. Yeah, Nate Metzger. <laughs> Having a great game out there he so sure far. Is. He sure is. So you want to challenge me on the outside? Go ahead. <laughs> Here comes Parker with the gun. He's got trips to the right. Throws off to the right side. He's got a man out there at the 45, and he gets a block, and there's a flag in the play. He'll go down, and you just wonder if this one's coming back. That was number two for the Cougs. That is Reese Krug, but I think that one's coming back. Right down by six, Chris Martin. Only marker on the play. Yeah, that's got to be a hold over yeah, here on Coach this side. Coach Recker's not happy about that as he's, you can see him down there, the disgust look on his face, and that's a hold that will come back. So that'll back the Cougars up. So uh, nothing going right right now for the Cougars. Great first drive of the game, but so far they've got a little bit of spit and sputter there. Yeah, a little bit, and and that hold right there, you know, I can see why your, your head coach is upset about it sure. because really. He didn't need it. He didn't need yeah. it. He had he had manu outmaneuvered the defensive back rack on that side over here, so he was free to go. And there you saw Braylon Parker, you talked about it earlier, that side throw he does. He, he's really talented, and it does remind you of Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, he throws that little sidearm <laughs> stuff, you know. That's what I used to pitch in baseball. I was a sidearm <laughs> pitcher. But. Braylon Parker's in the gun. He's got trips to the left, two receivers to the right. There goes Bills in motion. He's going to hand the ball. Go. He's going to keep it himself. And big number 64 for Wapakoneta with a vicious hit. Caden Ware, he's everywhere tonight, and not much of a gain, if any at all. No, you know, Caden Ware is just playing a great game in that middle there. You know, 6'2", 190 pounds, and he's going to use every bit of it right there. You want to run through me? Go ahead and try it. <laughs> That'll bring up third and 12 from the 38 for the Cougars, down 14 to 6. Parker's in the gun. He's got three receivers off to the left, almost in a uh, in a bunch formation. He's looking downfield under heavy pressure. He throws off to the right. He's got a man out there at about oh, the 47-yard line. And down goes number two, Reese Krug, as he grabs his ankle, and he is hurt. Mm. Well, let's hope he's okay, but you saw immediately when he went down, he grabbed his ankle. So we got an injury on the field. We're going to step aside with 6.42 to go. We'll be back with more high school football. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. The injured player was number two, Reese Krug, and luckily he was able to walk off the field, and I think he's going to be okay, though. I hope so. And I've got somebody in there <laughs> sitting up here with the number on right in front of us, sitting up here in the stands. Watch this guy. Here comes the punt by Van Wert, and a deep punt. Grant Jolly's going to field it at about the 10-yard line. He gets around the first guy. And he is going to be swarmed under at about the 16-yard line. So Grant Jolly returns it for about three or four yards. And that's where the Wapakoneta Redskins will take over with 6.26 to go, up 14-6. to Got to believe, Dar, that they want to kind of waste a little time. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but kind of take it down the field. A 6.25 drive wouldn't, wouldn't hurt anybody from Wapakoneta. Oh, absolutely anyway. not. And, and that's, you know. We talked about that, walking out of being very methodical a lot yeah. in, their, in their offense and stuff, and this is the perfect spot for it. You know, you just you know, drive it down the field, 
First and ten for the Redskins. Don't, you're not in a big hurry. Use up all the time you want. Drive it down the field, put some points on the board. You got the kicker that can kick it in, I'm sure, you know. What a luxury it is to have a kicker like that. So here comes Moyer with in the gun. He's got one tailback off to the right. Hauser goes in motion. He's going to hand the ball off to the first tailback up. That's number 21 for the Skins, Jason Nows, the big tailback. He gets about four yards on the carry. And Jason has uh, 60 carries this season, 357 yards, three touchdowns on the ground, one touchdown through the air. That'll make it second and six from the 17. The clock continues to run. We're at 6.05. Beautiful nice. night for high school oh, football. Dog. Man. We couldn't get a better night. Uh, low 70s, maybe going to fall down into the 60s, and uh, just a beautiful night here at Van Wert. Just a little bit of breeze, but not yeah, enough. not much to affect anything. Here comes the Redskins. This is Moyer in the gun. High snap, gets it off the Nows, goes off the right side, and he's going to pick up another frost roofing first down. So there you saw Jace Nows kind of sneak through the defense there a little bit and find a hole and gets the first down. Yeah, right through that off tackle on the right side, and, you know, kind of hit himself back here. He's 5'11", 210 pounds. To low to the ground on that particular carry, you know, get yourself through there and get yourself some uh, first down. Tonight's timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Our timeout sponsor, Metzger Financial Services. So first and 10 from the 29, another frost roofing first down for the Redskins. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Jason Nows off to his left. He's going to follow Nows and get a hole there, and he's going to pick up about three or four yards there. You saw it. What a nice play design as Jace Nows led the charge and went through that hole and made a nice crease for Caleb Moyer. Yeah, coming around on that left side where you've got big number 69, Austin Brown, or Michael Orr. I'm not sure which he is out there, but big 69 side. senior, 6'4", 380 pounds out yeah, there. Yeah, I could run behind him. And poor number 65 is over there have to, you know, to you know, try to get in there on him. Sure. That'll bring up second and seven from the 32. Moyers in the gun. Jace now soft to the right. There goes Grant Jolly in motion. Moyers going to sling it off to the right side. He's got a man out there, number 11, and that's guess who? Caden Page, as he just continues to rack up the catches and the yardage for another frost roofing first down. I mean, what a sling there by Caleb Moore too. Moyer, too. I mean, just, you know, perfect on the run, going to your right. You know, led his receiver just perfectly and just threw a bullet right in there. And, Dar, that's about the third time. And you mentioned earlier that we've seen them use Grant Jolly as a decoy. They brought oh, yeah. Jolly in motion. Everybody came with him, and they go out to Caden Page. Pretty soon they're going to start paying more attention to Caden <laughs> right. Page, and then you're going to yeah. see J Grant Jolly. Here comes Jace Nows off the left side. He's got blocks out there. He gets to the 50, tries to get around the corner, and just runs over a man. Oh, my goodness. Number 17 from Van Wert. Briston Wise came up, and he just got ran over by Jace Nows. That, my friends, is going to be a Binkley Real Estate Instant Replay. Yeah, absolutely. And, boy, he just ducked his head down and just ran right through the, the defender. And the defender was in good position. Oh, yeah, he, And absolutely. Wise, was in, he was low to the ground, and he was in really good position. But there you saw you, the power of Jace Nows. First and 10 from the 37 with 3.45 to go. Moyer's in the gun. He'll take the snap. He looks over to Caden Page. He's got him at the 30, and he's going to be taken out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. There you see Caden Page. That's In my book, that's catch seven for Caden Page in the first half. Well, and, and this Van Ward defense has got to get more aggressive out there on their secondary because they're kind of playing back off of the uh, Caden Page and Grand Jolly. You got a good five yards off of them and letting them take that short pass like that. Well, yeah, those short passes may not seem like much, but they start building up yards and, and building it, up yards. Yeah, and it's really a twist of two offenses yeah. here. You're seeing Wapak throw the ball quite a bit, which we didn't think, and you're seeing Van Wert run a lot more, so it's it's a bizarro world right now. A little bit of a chess match. <laughs> yes, it is. Here comes Nows off the right side. He stumbles a little bit, goes back towards the middle, but picks up about five or six really tough yards. Yeah, you saw, I thought he was going to fall down. Yeah, and he took three, and three defenders with him on that one. You know, just showing you, you know, he's only 210 pounds, but he's using all that 210 pounds very effectively right now as a running back. You say only 210 yards. You want to go down there and try to tackle him? Nah, no, no. <laughs> no, I'll pass. Uh, he is a I'd be like the guy boy. over here. The guy. <laughs> that's right, that's right. 
That'll bring up first and 10, another Frost roofing first down. First and 10 for the 22 with 2.39 to go. Wapakoneta just continues this drive. We talked about it. They got the ball at 6.26 to go until halftime, and they have just drove it down the field methodically. Moyer throws the ball out. He's got a man out there, oh. and a nice open field tackle by Bills as he's right on top of number three for Wapakoneta, Grant Stauffer. That's exactly what you were talking about, Dar, about aggressive defensive play. Yeah, they needed that, and that was a freshman that made that play, too. Micah Cowan out there for Van Wert. So a nice aggressive play there by the Cougars. That'll bring up second and 12 with 2.05 to go. The clock continues to run. Wapakoneta leads 14 to 6. Danny Homer, Darn Evergall from Van Wert Stadium here, Agers Stadium. A key WBL matchup. Here come the Redskins. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to look across the field, throws to the right. He's got Caden Page. He'll take oh, it to the goodbye. take it straight up the middle. Caden Page with a touchdown for the Redskins at the 144 mark to go. That's another, another Owls Woody Diner touchdown. Caden Page's second touchdown reception of the game. And right now he is the dominant player for both teams. That'll bring in Kyle Beach for the Lee Kinzel Extra Point. Lee Kinzel on Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. So Kyle Beach will try to put this one at the 21 mark. Kick is up. It is good. And the Wapak and the Redskins with 1.44 to go until halftime. Lead 21-6. to You're watching high school football right here on WOC. Welcome back to Hager Stadium here at Van Wert High School where the Wapkinet Redskins put another touchdown on the board, lead 21 to six in dark. We talked when they took the ball over at 626. Wouldn't they like a 625 drive? Well, they just about daggled they, there, did it? They certainly did, and very, very methodical drive. Great mix of run in the pass as well for Wapkinetta. Uh, just doing an outstanding job so far in the game plan for this particular game. And, and utilizing the guys that they really need to utilize, and Caden Page and, and Grant Jolly, and you know, kind of playing off of each other with Jolly, like as we said, being the decoy mostly tonight for Wapkinetta, and Page doing most of the catching. But I could look for that. They could reverse in the second half because you get used to Page out there. You start playing on right. him. Pretty right. soon Grant Jolly is going to be there. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So another deep kickoff by Kyle Beach, and they will take over at the 20. Beach's down 21 to 6 with 144 to go. Now, Danny, I'm not sure what we can expect from Van Wert on this particular series now. I well, you, you would think that they need some momentum going into halftime, so at least get in field goal range. They've got a fine field goal kicker. Uh, you, obviously, you want a touchdown to take into halftime, but, uh, you know, do what you can, but you really need something positive. You know, I, and I'd be tempted just to go for it. I mean, right now, sure. you know, just, just throw it down the field and see what you can get out of it, you know, right off the bat. Here's Braylon Parker. He's got four receivers to his left. Ball's tipped in the air, and it's oh, going to be picked out. off. Picked off by number eight. That is Bryson Pack. The ball was tipped at the line, and Bryson Pack was Johnny on the spot, and a huge turnover. And I think that was caused right by Nate Metzger over there. I think he's the one who got his hand on the ball that popped it up into the air, and then it was a free free ball then for Wapakoneta. Dar, this changes everything with 139 to go. If Wapakoneta can put this in the end zone, that is going to be huge for the Skins. Oh, absolutely. And if they can't do that, at least get three points out of this Well, deal. yeah, you, you, that's a great point, Dar, because you are in well within Kyle Beach's range. Oh, yeah, range. absolutely. Well within his great conditions tonight, no win. Yeah, you're well within his range. And you would, you would assume that maybe they would play a little conservative because of that, but let's see what they do. They've thrown the ball a lot tonight. Here well, at least, you know, you can, you can go for the end zone on this one here. You know, let's not worry about being conservative at all. Here's That's Moyer. what they're going to do. You're looking across the middle. He's got him open. There Caden he is. Page, touchdown is. skins. Caden Page pulls it in for his third touchdown of the half. He is dominating this game. That's another Owls Woody Diner touchdown. Well, you called it, partner. You said, look, I need, no, I need lottery numbers, and I need them quick. <laughs> well, you had nothing to lose on that one right there. <laughs> right, you know, that's a great call. You, you were already in field goal range. You knew that. You know, just go for the end zone, and that's exactly what they did. A good catch there by Keaton Page, though, kind of over his shoulder type thing. He had to turn around a little bit to get that one. 
So here comes Kyle Beach with the extra point. It is up and good. Our extra point is by Lee Kinzel on Urban Road in Van Take a look at our pre owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. So, Jacob, our cameraman, we're about to lose dark as ESPN's calling. With, with an analysis <laughs> like that, it, he's not going to be here long, folks, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's a good call, partner. Let's take a look at these two teams, uh, Dar, their schedule this year. We talked a little bit about them. Wapakoneta at 2-2 two and two with those two losses. Marion Local in a, just a heartbreaking loss that they had that game under wraps. Defiance was the shocker, but again, Defiance and Van Wert played this year. Van Wert beat them already. So uh, they come back, they get OG 45-0, they beat St. Mary's last week, a big rivalry game. So, you know, everything for Wapakoneta, they're going to get better. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, you know, and you think you're coming back after Defiance. After you play Marion Local and you play them that well and you look like you got the game in hand, like you said, Danny, then, you know, maybe a little letdown next week. You know, you, you hope not, but, you know, these are kids. I mean, these young kids, you know, but this Wap's going to team, and, and this is going to be a big boost for them right now going into halftime at 28-6. to six. You know, Van Wert's been kind of scratching their head, you know. Absolutely. We take a look at Van Wert's season already. They beat Brian in the lid in the season opener. They come back, they beat Bath in a high-scoring game. Salina got them 17-14 for their only loss. And then last week, they came back in an absolute classic and beat Defiance 43-42. Well, that was a 10-second uh, touchdown. <laughs> you know, from the time that they scored their last touchdown to the time they scored that one. Here's Kyle Beach kick as it sails deep into the end zone. And again, they will start from the 20 yard line. So the difference right now, Dar, is two huge turnovers on interceptions by the Wapakoneta Redskins. One was a, it was an opportunistic pick where they were backed up. The second one tipped at the line. So I don't want to put all the blame on Braylon Parker. No, no, absolutely not. That was. That last interception of his, you know, great job by, I think it, I think it was Nate I Metzger. I think it was Nate Metzger. Got You're his right. hand up there, you know, got up some elevation there to get his hand on the ball. Good timing by him, you know, and then it just fell into no man's land. So here comes Parker, and he is hit immediately at the line of scrimmage by number 57, Jaden Rampula. And yards are tough right now they are. for the Van Wert Cougars. And there you saw Jaden Rampula and Joey Truesdale. And I think are maybe the best duo of linebackers in Northwest Ohio. Those two are fantastic. I think that's interception by number eight earlier on by was Braxton, Braxton Pack. And I think that was his second one this season. Here comes Parker. He's going to keep it himself. And there's a flag. And we'll see what they're going to call here. But nothing going right. They got a uh, false, start the for false start by Van Wert. So 52 seconds to go. So I'm thinking Coach Recker and the Cougars just want to get this one to halftime, regroup, and see what they can do in the yeah, second just, half. Yeah, just run this one out and let's go in and, and into the locker room well, and see what happens yeah, in the first you're, half. You're backed up at the 14-yard line, so you don't want to make a mistake here like you did last time and give Wapakoneta another opportunity. Uh, but, uh, you know. They're going to continue to uh, try to move the ball up the field. Parker's in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man up front. That's Bills as he goes to the 20. Gets out to the 25, to the 30. He gets some room, and he goes out of bounds. That'll stop the clock with 29 seconds to go. So a nice job of running the ball there by number eight, Kelton Bill there. And they're going to get a hold. So everything they do good just keeps coming back to haunt them because there's a hold on that play. Yeah, it seems like every long, you know, play that they have is called back on a holding penalty. So 29 seconds to go. You got to wonder if they're going to continue to run the ball here or maybe just take a knee with second and 16 and get to the locker room and regroup. Well, unfortunately for Van Wert, they, they're averaging about 71 yards in penalties per game. Here comes Parker in the gun. He's got a single set back to his right. He's going to hand the ball off to Bill. And Bill gets up to about the 25-yard line. That's where he'll be taken down. And that may be the last play of the half. Let's see if they huddle up real quick. And uh, no, I think they're going to let it run yeah, out. I think they're going to run out. So that will do it for the first half as the clock runs down to the zeros across the board. 
after one half a play, the Wapakoneta Redskins flexing their muscles and they lead the Van Wert Cougars 28 to six. We come back, we'll have second half action right here on WOSN. Welcome back, it's halftime here at Eggers Stadium. Man, we're Cougars and the Wapakoneta Redskins. The Redskins lead 28 to six. Total domination, Dar, by Wapakoneta. Started out great for the Cougars, and boy, they just had a lot of trouble with the offensive side of the ball. Oh, they certainly did. And, you know, like you said, they started out their first drive. Was just, you know, the first series was great. They went down, put points on the board right away, but after that, then it was just all downhill from there. And some nice adjustments by Walt Gannetta, but you know, a lot of it was just a change in game plan, I think, basically for Van Wert, too. And be interesting in the second half. Our halftime adjustment sponsor tonight is Al's Woody's Diner and Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419 738 9111. So, Dar, let's talk. Typically, we start out with the visitors first, but let's talk about Van Wert, what they have to do to get back in this ballgame. Well, I think there's a couple things. One thing on defense is they got to get more aggressive. They you know, they can't play off of the receivers for Wapakoneta. They didn't expect Wapakoneta to come in here and throw the ball as much as they had, have been all the night long. So you got you got to get more aggressive. You know, you got to go after them. You got to get in there. You got to disrupt their, you know, their playmaker, uh, Caleb Moyer, who's, what we say, 12 for 13 so far in the first half. You know, you got to get in there and do that kind of thing. The second thing is offense. You got you to change your game plan a little bit now. You know, you got to come back out and be, you know, as aggressive on offense as you were in your first drive. You know, you, you can't lay back and you know, just try to run the ball, just try to position yourself, move it down the court, down the field. You're already down 28 to six. You got to come out firing all cylinders. You got to get in your hands of the quarterback. Braylon Parker and let him do what he did in the first series. And as we talked earlier, we talked about Wapakoneta, everything going right for them right now. As you said, Caleb Moore, 12 of 13 for 190 yards, three touchdowns, and then <laughs> catching the ball, Caden Page, spectacular, three touchdowns. Do they change anything, Dar, for the second half? Well, I don't know if you're going to change a whole lot of things. I think one of the things you're going to see probably in, in the second half a little bit more of, you know, Caden Page had a great first half, and they used him as a primary receiver. I think you're going to see Grant Jolly get a little more, a few more of the catches in the second half. You know, you're using Grant Jolly a lot as your decoy, which paid off dividends yeah, for you in that did. first half. In the second half, you know, flip the script a little bit. You know, you can, you know, use Caden Page now because everybody's keying on Caden Page now. You know, flip the script a little bit and go with Col and Grant Jolly a little bit on some of those receptions, but. You know, don't change your game plan at all. I mean, you're you know, methodically moving the ball down the field. Your quarterback's on fire right at the moment. You know, he's you know, hitting his receivers, he's getting good, you know, good looks at it. You know, just keep doing the same thing. They're using a nice mix of the pass and the run between the you know, on on every series and it's paying off for him. And you get down, you know, nice thing they got, you know, you get down inside the 30 yard line, so you got a field goal kicker. Yeah, and you know it, you know, and you can take some chances when you get in the red zone. And, you know, that's what you want to do. So I wouldn't see a whole lot of changes for walking in. For one thing is, Keep the pedal to the metal. You know, you can't let up on a Van Wert team that's averaging almost 42 points a game or they're going to come back and, and torch you in the second half. So you've got to be continue to be as aggressive as you were in the first half. Good stuff, partner. Our halftime of Johnson's tonight sponsored by Al's Woody's Diner and Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. So at halftime here in Avis Stadium, Van Wert down 28 to 6 to Wapakoneta. We come back with a second half kick. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Edgar Stadium here at Van Wert High School. Wapakoneta Redskins with 28 to 6, just getting started here, waiting for the kick for the second half. Our premier sponsor for Wapakoneta tonight is the Side Rail, featuring signature burgers, appetizers, large portions, and specialty drinks. And for Van Wert, the premier sponsor, Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for your insurance needs. So, partner, Wapak has been in control of this whole thing. We set it off the air. Do you think they're going to change anything offensively? Do you think they're going to take I, – I, I obviously think they're going to take some time off the clock, but will they put the ball up in the air as much as they did in the first half? Well, I – should they or will they? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point. That's a no. That's yeah. a seriously great point. You know, 
They they should should not. I mean, they should run the clock as much as they can, put it in the hands of their tailback, or, and let him run the ball. But when your quarterback's 12 for 13 and, and on a roll yeah, right he now, he's really good right know, now. And you're getting good protection back there. He really hasn't been hassled all night long. You know, I probably keep with my game plan the way it is. Landon Frieden kicks off for the Cougars. Jace Nouse takes it about the five-yard line. He'll go to the 20 to the 25. He'll get up to about the 30. He'll be hit hard by a host of Cougars. And that's where Caleb Moyer and the Wapakoneta Redskins will take over. Caleb Moyer was fantastic in the first half. 12 of 13, 190 yards and three touchdowns. He was so good, I don't remember the missed catch. I don't I don't, I don't remember the incompletion because I thought he was perfect in the first half. But uh, our stats say he was 12 of 13 for 190 yards and three touchdowns. And not only that, Dar, he just, he really, he can read defensive coverages and there was never a pass in doubt. Well, and, and a great job by the offensive line, too, because he really wasn't pressured back there no, at all. He had right. plenty of time to find his receivers, gave his receivers plenty of time to get down the field, you know, even uh, even faked a couple times. Here's Naus as he goes up the middle for a gain of about four yards. And wow, maybe six yards on the <laughs> second effort. Jason Naus, an unbelievable job of second effort running right there. And that's our first call of the third quarter. Wright State University Lake Campus, whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. Well, I think here in the second half, Danny, I think that the burden really lies with Van Wert. They're the ones that have to make the big adjustments. They're the ones that are going to have to come up with something different than what they did in the first half. You know, and they've definitely got to get more aggressive. They got to, you know, go after these guys a little bit harder. You know, they got to get in there to, and disrupt Moyer somehow. You know, yes. Not let him do what he's doing. You know, they have to make all the adjustments where Walpaw really can keep with what they're doing. So a little stoppage in play there. And that is our first timeout called tonight. Our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Sports on WOSN. Back here at Agu Stadium in Van Wert High School. 11.04 to go. Walking at Redskins on their first drive of the second half. They lead 28 to 6. Second and two from the 37. Moyer's in the gun. He's got Page far right. He's got Jolly on his left. He's going to hand the ball to Jace Nouse off the right side. Nouse has got some oh, room. And there out, he goes. He gets through the middle. Oh, my goodness. He got a seam, and he was on to the races, and he is taken down about the 50-yard line. There you saw the explosive vision of that young man. And speed on, on the second time. Boy, a big, big hole around that, on that right side, too, for him to get through there. You know, Paige didn't even have to throw a block out there because there, there was such a big hole out there. You know, we talk so much about this offense and that offensive line with Austin Brown and Landon Miko, and Mason Ludwig, Caden Ware, Ryan Price. They're they're doing a bang-up job right now, Dar. Well, they're big and very fundamentally sound. Absolutely. Here comes Nouse up the middle, and he's going to be taken down by a host of, of excuse me, of Cougars. And he picked up a frost roofing first down on the last play there. Frost roofing family owned and operated for over 95 years. Joined the Frost family there. Equal opportunity employer called 419-739-ROOF. I don't like to use the word frost. It <laughs> brings up winter, and I don't like, yeah, I like this like weather we're having right now, but frost roofing is quality. Yep, there you are. You know, good job there by Chase Nels, too, and hang on to that football because you can see the Cougars are trying to rip it out of his hands. Second and eight from the 46. There's Hauser in motion. He's going to lead block. Oh, no, they're going to pull it back out. They're going to flip it over to Hauser as he goes out into the flat. And a nice play conception there as Caleb Moyer fakes the handoff. You thought Hauser was going to lead the block. He goes across the line. They throw it to him for a nice big completion and another frost roofing first down. A great play call there. I too. like that. And I think that's the first reception for, for him tonight, the young man. You know, There's another the weapon we haven't even mentioned. He's 6'5". Yeah. Coming out there, and he did a nice job of just pulling himself out there and getting open in, in an open field right there. 9.40 to go. Second and eight from the 31. Wampak leads 28 to 6. Moyer's in the gun. He's going to hand the ball to Nouse off the left side, looking for some blocks. He leads them blockers, and here he goes. The 20. He's out to the about the 19-yard line where he gets pushed up. Did you see what he did there, Dar? He had his hand on the back of those offensive linemen just waiting. He's so patient. Absolutely, and I was just about ready to say that, Danny. There's one thing you see about him, his explosiveness on that run earlier on, but that one there was very methodical, very follow your blockers, let them do their job in front of you, and then come around when you had the opportunity. 
And we got a great shot there on our instant replay. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley Real Estate, our instant replay sponsor. That'll bring up first and 10, another frost roofing first down. Here comes Naus up the middle, and he's going to be met immediately by number six for the Cougars, Spencer Clay. He gets taken down really quick for a gain of maybe a yard, maybe back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, they weren't fooled at all on that one. They're Van Wert wasn't. I mean, the handoff to to the running back, and he was right hit right immediately. Tonight's red zone sponsor is B and B Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. B and B Auto Repair, our red zone sponsor. Here comes Moyer in the gun. He gets the snap, throws off to the left side. He's got Page out there, and another reception by number 11, Caden Page. And that's number nine catch on the night for Page. And again, the you know, Van Wert defensive backs playing too far off of him, allowing Page just to go down there, take a, a quick turnaround, and be right open there for the pass. So bring up third and five. And the other thing, too, Dar, we talked about this uh, during the break. Uh, look at what they're doing with the clock. They are just taking huge chunks of time off this clock. Right now, we're on a seven minute drive by the Skins. And there you saw Van Wert almost jump offside. Caleb Moyer didn't. They didn't snap the ball. He'll go under center. He's going to hand the ball to Naus. Naus goes off the right side. And it's going to be close for a first down. Let's see where they mark it. But I think he's going to be sure, short. Excuse me. You're about six inches short. Yeah, you're right. That's going to bring up. They're going to say fourth and two. I thought it was closer, Ooh, I than, thought that. It was closer than that. Yeah, they pushed the ball back a little bit. And here comes Kyle Beach. The five-star kicker comes out, which could be a chip shot for this young man. Let's see what he does here. Boy, what a luxury when you got a, a guy like Beach out there that you sure inside, you're inside the 30 yard line, you know, you got a chance for points. Fourth and two from the 10. Beach is going to attempt a 20 yarder here. It is up, and it is nothing but good. That young man is October. So a 7 18 to go here in the third quarter. The Rock County Redskins score on their opening drive of the second half, and they lead 31 to 6 right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. With 7.18 to go here in the third quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins all over the Van Wert Cougars, 31 to six. And Dar, you saw Wapakoneta did exactly what we talked about. They took seven and a half minutes off the clock and get a score. And they didn't change anything. Right. You know, right. You know they came out, they mixed the run and the pass again. They went a little bit heavier on the run in that particular series, which you kind of expected them to do. But then you turn Moyer loose and, and they threw a little wrinkle in there, throwing a tight end in there you know, catching a nice pass sure. along the sideline. So that was a nice little wrinkle for him as well. So here comes Kyle Beach to kick off here with 7.18 to go. And another unbelievable kick as it goes completely out of the end zone. Well, if you watch him do on those, on those kickoffs, he, he approaches the ball and all of a sudden it's like a hammer went it's, down. You know, just and you can hear boom, it from up here. You know? I mean, that's that's the difference between Division One kicker and... <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's just amazing. He has a bright future ahead of him. He certainly does. <laughs> yeah, he's five for six now on field goals. His longest one this season was 37 yards. I had him last year, and I watched him kick a 51-yarder over at Wapakoneta, and it was it was cleared by a long way. He is he is something else. So here comes Braylon Parker in the Cougars down 31 to 6, 7-18 to go. First and 10 from the 20. Parker's in the gun. He's got trips to the left, two to the right. He's going to look across the field, throw off to the right side. He's got his man out there. They got a completion to about the 34-yard line. That's number two, Reese Krug. Good to see Krug back in the game. As we saw him go down with an injury earlier, but he seems to be okay. He seems to be. And again, Nate Mesker over there for Wapkinette on that one. And you can see the Wapkinette DB and DBs are all playing off a little bit. They don't want the big play. They're going to yep. give up some yardage. You know, they're up 31-6, to six, but we're not going to let you break a long one on us. That'll bring up another frost roofing first down. Here comes Parker. He's got Bill off to his right. He's got Krug in motion. He's going to take the snap. 
Looks down the field, under pressure, throws to the right. And nice strike out there. And oh, he gets away, down the sideline. He's, he's at the 30, to the 20, to the 15, 10, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the six yard line. Number three for the Cougars, Connor Campbell. And that's the big play they've been looking for all evening. And Caleb Moyer is the one that caught up with him on that sideline, pushed him out of bounds. Connor Campbell, yeah, the leading receiver in the Western Buckeye League has been pretty much shut out tonight, and that's a big play they've been looking for all evening. Well, he shook off two defenders to get, be able to break that play loose, and once he got open on that sideline, he was show the speed of that young man. So here comes Parker and the crew. They'll take it first and 10 at the eight yard line. He's gonna throw off to the right, or to the left side, and that ball goes clear over the head. I think uh, <laughs> I think Grant Jolly thought it was a lateral, but it was clearly uh, across the line of scrimmage. But great job by the defensive end for Wapakoneta to get up high and force him to throw that thing up high. You know, Bar, that's funny you should say it. We've watched that defensive line for Wapak all night, and those kids are so fundamentally set. They get their hands straight up in the air. You don't see that a lot out of high school oh, kids. No, They're don't. very well coached. Good elevation over that and there. Got their hands up and, you know, and said, throw it over the top of me, and that's what he was forced to try to do. Second 10 from the eight-yard line. Here comes Parker. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to take it himself, and he's going to take it in for a – Al Woody, Diner touchdown. Braylon Parker with the eight yard scamper as he gets the Cougars a little bit closer in this game to make it 31 to 12. And that's Parker's second touchdown run of the night. First one was a three yarder, this was an eight yarder. So with 6.48 to go, the Van Wert Cougars respond with a really nice touchdown drive. A couple big runs and a nice play there by Parker to get it in the end zone. That'll bring out number 23 for the Cougars, Griffin McCracken for the Lee Kinzel extra point. Snap is back, hold is good, kick is up, and it is good. So with 6.48 to go in the third quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins lead 31 to 13. You're watching high school football right here at WSN. Back here at Van Wert High School with 6.48 to go. The Washington Redskins lead 31 to 13. And boy, the Van Wert Cougars needed that drive in the worst way, Dar. Oh, they certainly did. And they finally got a big pass, pass and catch by Connor Campbell to, to key that particular touchdown. You know, and Braylon Parker then be able to fill him shit off. But, you know, it was huge for them just to get some momentum of any sure. kind. Tonight. Absolutely. So the defense is going to be tested here as they need a quick stop and get the ball back and get that offense back on the field. And I don't know if the folks here at Van Wert are happy about the score or not, but they're cheering for whoever just won the $18,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'd cheer too. <laughs> You're not kidding. Yeah. I said, why didn't we get one of those tickets? So there's a little squib kick, just goes about to the 35-yard line. And here comes the Wapakoneta Redskins, number 22 for the Redskins. That's Jarrett Mullen. We've called his name quite a few times tonight, but you saw him get the ball and a nice return for the Redskins. And decent field position for Wapakoneta to start this drive. And I just wonder if that was a design kick or if he just didn't get enough on the ball, but uh, gave Wapakoneta great field position. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think he really got enough on the ball. I don't think you want to give Wapakoneta the ball. I don't want to give the ball to Wapakoneta yeah, anywhere. That's true. <laughs> you know, particularly right here, you know. Yeah. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 37. Caleb Moyer's in the gun. He's got Jace Naus off to his right. He's got trips to the left, including Hauser, who's lined up wide. They're going to swing the ball out to Jace Naus on the right side. He's following those lead blockers, and he's going to pick up a big bunch of yardage. And it looks like it's really close to a first down. I think it is another frost roofing first down. And you got to be impressed with that young man oh, when he carries the ball because he's, you know, he has one thing in mind. I'm going north and south. I'm not going to go either. You know, once I get to the outside edge, I'm breaking right up the field, and I'm going to keep my feet going that direction. And if you want to bring me down, bring me down. 6.22 to go. Clock continues to run. Danny Hilbert, Darn Evergall from Eggers Stadium here in Van Wert, Ohio. Key WBL showdown between the Wapakoneta Redskins and the Van Wert Cougars. Moyer's going to hand the ball off to Jay Snouse as he goes off the left side. Taken down by number 22, Aaron Dowdy. A nice tackle by Dowdy as he filled the hole there. I think that's a first time all night that Nouse hasn't got something positive. Yeah, I mean, he's got 23 tackles coming into this game. He's also got one fumble recovery on top of that. But 
And they haven't ran the ball a lot towards him, you know, all night long. Well, for good reason. He's a yeah, solid. <laughs> he's a solid senior, six foot right. two, 195 pounds. 540 to go. Second and nine from the 48. Moyer's in the gun. Jace now off to his right. Hauser's in the slot position. He's going to throw the ball, fake the ball, and he's going to throw oh, down the side. And he's, he's got gone. Caden Page down the sideline. And you saw the double move there by Caden Page. You saw the pump fake by Caleb Moyer. Execution, brother. Execution. Execution. And that's the one that they did on the early in the first half, too, on the other side. Same kind of thing, that little pump fake, and then lead him knowing he's going to break out of that, you know, where he's at and head downfield. Another frost roofing first down, and that puts it in the B&B &B Auto Repair red zone. B&B &B Auto Repair rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent services. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. First and 10 from the 20. Clock continues to run with 5.12 to go here in the third quarter. Caleb Moyer having the game of his life right now. Everything Making going coach his way. Happy. Absolutely. Here comes Jace Nows, and he uh, gets about two yards, but number five for Van Wertz. You saw him, Gage Steeman, got in the backfield. Nows just went around him, sidestepped him a little bit there. And kind of dove underneath he everybody did. else yeah, when you're he exactly there, right. got that extra two yards. There's the Van Wert Cougar coming up to see us, Jacob. We'll get a good shot of the Van Wert Cougar. <laughs> he says, no, we got to keep my eyes on the football game. <laughs> They make it second and nine from the 19. 4.32 to go. Clock continues to run. Skins lead 31-13. Moyer takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself, go off to the left side. Not much happening there. And he's going to be taken down for a loss. And he has slammed to the ground. That'll make it third and nine. A host of Amward tacklers on that one. Connor Campbell finishing it off at the end there, but you know, two or three other Cougars in on that tackle. That's a big third and nine, but again, you're inside field goal range already. Manworth's giving up 10 rushing touchdowns on the season prior to tonight's game. Jolly goes in motion, Moyer's in the gun. He's gonna keep it himself, he'll roll to the right side. He's got Jolly out in the flat. Finds him out there. Oh, he goes, oh my goodness, Grant Jolly took down a player and then went after number two there. He was going to take them both down. He was. <laughs> he says, I haven't had that many catches tonight, Coach. I, I'm going to get in the end zone one way or the other. <laughs> Grant Jolly, the senior who's committed to North Carolina State on a baseball scholarship, makes it first and seven from the seven. First Again, and goal. Great, great play by Caleb Moyer because he rolled out to his right. He's Caden Page was right there in front of him. He went right to Colin Campbell, or right to uh, Grant Jolly on that one, and, and got the first down that way. So here we go, first and goal from the seven yard line. Moyer's under center, Hauser goes in motion. They're gonna give the ball off to Reese Sneer, and he's just taken down by a host of Cougars. Yeah, he didn't have much running room, Snyder was just bottled up there really quickly. And there you see Wapakoneta is content to let that clock run, that 2.54 to go, as they've got the ball on the seven yard line. They lead 31 to 13. Danny Holbrook, Dar never gone from Eggers Stadium, beautiful Eggers Stadium with all the renovations they've done over here and they're continuing to work. And uh, Folks over here told us that uh, after the season, they're gonna work on the press box, and put a new press box up and uh, just a beautiful, beautiful facility here in downtown Van Wert. Here comes Moyer. He's going to keep it himself as he goes up. There's a little push from his lineman there in the tailback as they try to push him into the end zone. That's going to bring up third and goal from about the three-yard line. A smart play right there. You want to hang on to the ball. You don't want to make any mistakes at this juncture right here. You just let your quarterback take it up as close as he can. Clock continues to run, 2.07. Wapakoneta leads 31-13, trying to put another six on the board here. A lot of great WBL games tonight. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, what a league. I'm you <laughs> telling you, it's fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic. Here's Moyer in the gun. Hauser goes in motion. He's going to block for Moyer as he tries to go around the right Ooh. side. And Moyer was just taken down. That's going to bring up a fourth down situation. But I don't think he anticipated that uh, pass rush coming after him like that when he went around to the right side. And here comes Kyle Beach to add three onto the board. Well, that got the fam work crowd were on the home side, and they got the crowd up on their feet for one of the few times tonight they've had something really to cheer about. 
Nice defensive play by the Cougars. So Kyle Beach will come on as he tries basically a chip shot here from the 12 yard line, looks like. Snap is back, the hold is good, and the kick is good. Kyle Beach puts another three on the board. So with 105 to go in the third quarter, the Wapakana Redskins extend their lead to 34-13. We'll be back right after these messages. Back here at Eggers Stadium with 105 to go in the third quarter. Wapakoneta the Redskins extend that lead to 34-13, and Kyle Beach continues to <laughs> impress, yeah, well, like to say said, the least. <laughs> that, you know, that's a luxury, you know, a lot of teams would like to have. You know, knowing that you can drive the ball down, get inside the 30, and come away with points, you know, when you got a kicker like that. You know, that's now two for two tonight, and making him six for, what, a six for eight overall in field goals so far this season. And there again, he booms it through the end zone, and you hear it clear. We're, we're at the top of the stadium here, and you can hear it like a shotgun, just boom. That's just amazing. I, that young man is a special player, and, and, and you know, a, a position that doesn't get looked at a lot. No, absolutely not. And, and not only can you hear, but you can see it. I mean, you <laughs> yes. watch him, you know, he approaches the ball, you know, slowly, and then all of a sudden, an explosion right there when he hits the ball. So here come the Cougars, Braylon Parker and his offense trying to get back in this game. 105 to go here in the third quarter, first and 10 to the 20. Parker's going to throw off to the right side, and Ooh. it's picked off. It, oh, no, they're going to the say it hit the ground. My goodness, number eight for the Redskins. Bryson Pack almost had pick number two there. And uh, again, the linemen get their hands up and deflect the ball. Yeah, they're doing a great job of either deflecting the ball or forcing him to throw it where he doesn't want to throw it. And, you know, just a great job by this walking out of defense tonight. There's a little roll out and a pass from Parker over to number two, Reese Krug. We've seen him quite a bit tonight. That'll make it third and 10 from the, about the 25 yard line, or excuse me, third and five, excuse me. Third and five from the 25. Walking at a, only giving up 11 points a game, and they're sticking pretty close to that right now. Heavy rush here on Parker as he's trying to avoid the rush. And he's got him in his face. He's going to throw it down the middle, or excuse me, the sidelines, and that ball just falls short. And the Van Wert crowd wanted pass interference. It looked like he slipped a little bit, Dar. That's yeah, what I, I saw. I think so, too. Parker having to run for his life back there because well, the, Kinetta had three guys coming down on him. Yeah, they really came hard after him there, and uh, I thought for a second they were going to go for it, and uh, Coach Recker decides to punt the ball on his 25-yard yeah. uh, line, which which is a good call. Yeah, not a good place you want to go for it. If you don't get it, you just gave three points to Walt Kinetta. There's a stoppage in play here as uh, looks like number 57. They're talking to Jaden Rampula. And they get it all organized here and straightened out. So Van Wert will go into pump formation. Back deep for the Skins is number one, Grant Jolly, and number 11, Caden Page. It goes off the side of his foot, and it'll go out of bounds. Oh, my goodness, about the 44-yard line, and not his best punt of the night. And that's where the Wapakoneta Redskins will take over. Yeah, it'll be a good, good field position again for Wapakoneta. And again, all they have to do is mix the run up a little bit, throw a pass here and there. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapakoneta, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. You had some good pizza tonight there, partner. I saw you yeah, was. chomping away on that. Jacob had some. Oh, the old play-by-play -play guy didn't get any of that. Well, I didn't. <laughs> I knew That's you were going to be reading the Lee's I, I Famous know, right, Recipe Chicken right, all night that's long. That's right. Was I'm going to get me some Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. <laughs> we go back through Lima. <laughs> Don't forget the sweet tea either. That's when you. right. <laughs> <laughs> and some of Jacob's Skyline Chili. He's a Skyline guy. <laughs> Here come the skins. First and 10 from the 46. 23 seconds to go until the end of the third quarter. Moyer's going to hand the ball off to Jace Nows. He's oh, got a hole. No. He is Look gone. Out. Jace Nows from the 45-yard line, and he is going to take it to the house. A 55-yard touchdown Jace run by Jace Nows. You could have ran through that hole, Dar. I could have easily. <laughs> wow. 
That is another Owls Woody's Diner touchdown. Owls Woody's Diner in Wapak is Wapak's best place for pizza wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. That'll make it 40-13 to 13 with 12 seconds to go. They can they, they score from anywhere, Dar. They're, they're just they're well, getting so good right now. I'll tell you what, Danny, that, that run right there, that, that kid had the presence of mind. He you know, came around there. He saw the huge hole. He did. You're right. You know, and then he knew right then, turn on the Jets, because you got two guys to beat. He beat both of those to the end zone. Cow beats for the extra point, and he knocks it through. That's another Lee Kinzel extra point. Lee Kinzel on Urban Road. Man, we're take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinzel.com. 12 seconds to go. We'll keep it right here. Wapakoneta Redskins lead 41 to 13. Look, Dar, we talked about it earlier, about the three-team race right now. And uh, although I see three-team race and still Elida undefeated, the reason I'm not saying much about the Bulldogs right now is they haven't played Defiance, Wapak, and Van Wert. It'll all work itself it will, out. It will. But you got to look right now, just in the in, in what we see right now, Wapak clearly right now may be the class of the WBL, although they did lose the WBL, or excuse me, to Defiance, and then Elida still undefeated. Oh, I, I think so, too. And I think uh, Wapakoneta is finding themselves, you know, after that loss of Defiance. I, you know, they started out, like we said, with a, a tough, tough loss sure. to a very, very, very good Marion local team. Oh, my goodness. You know, <laughs> every year. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then came back and a little, maybe a little bit of let down against Defiance, you know. But but they're starting to find themselves not only in that, but their their quarterbacks finding themselves. Oh, and that's the biggest thing. Playing really you know, well. He you know he's putting a game together, a really good game together, and they're finding their receivers. You know he you know he's methodical on his team. He can read the defense as well. You know. And this kid's only a sophomore, so he can wait two more years of this. Well, we came into this game knowing that Grant Jolly was a really good receiver. Caden Page has become a, a serious weapon for this Redskin team. He certainly has, and he's only a sophomore, too. And must have caught a fair catch there because they stopped him from running out. So with 12 seconds to go, they'll go to the 20-yard line, down 41-13. to 13. But you look at this Wapakoneta team, you know, Jolly's only a junior. Moyer's a sophomore. Page is a sophomore. I mean, this team is going to be loaded for, yeah, for a really, couple more really years good. to go. So here comes Brylan Parker and the Van Wert Cougars down 41-13. to 13. This, in all intents and purposes, should be the last play of the third quarter. Parker's going to roll off to his left looking downfield. Got a man out there. Catch made by number three, and that is Connor Campbell, and that will end the third. Well, no, they're going to say one second on the clock. I don't know how that happened. It just no, stopped because the they, they said keep the clock running. Uh, that's oh, there it. You go. There we go. That'll end the third quarter. So after three quarters of play from Ego Stadium here in Van Wert, the Wapakoneta Redskins all over the Van Wert Cougars, 41-13. You're watching high school football on WOSC. Welcome back here to Van Wert High School. We start of the fourth quarter. Ryland Parker and the Cougars at first and 10 from the 31-yard line. They've got trips to the left. Parker's going to roll. He's under heavy pressure. Throws it in the middle. He's got a man out there. And that's completion made to number nine for the Cougars, Colin Haggerty. And a tackle made by guess who? Number five, Nate Metzger again. Nate Metzger everywhere. Our first call of the fourth quarter, sponsored by Wright State University Lake Campus. Whether you're interested in an associate's or bachelor's degree, Wright State University Lake Campus offers something for you. Visit lake.wright.edu to apply today. So here comes Parker, second and seven from the 34. He's got a man in motion. Parker looks across the defense. He's under heavy pressure, rolls off to his right. He's going to run it himself. He's got a big lane and a lot of grass in front of him. He gets to the 45, up to the 50, and he'll be taken out of bounds. Oh, he gets a lot more yardage. Taken out of bounds at about the 45, and there's a late hit. Yeah. Uh, not real sure about that yeah, one, Dar, because either, number 50, yeah. Jaden Rampula thought the same thing I thought. And look, it doesn't get any better than this. Mark Bagley's in the house right behind us. We got somebody that knows football right here. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? If it was a big rain and we'd be on you. <laughs> uh, if you didn't hear, Mark said in a couple years we get to go in the press box. <laughs> but hey, you got a great weather tonight, Mark, and a, and a great I game. Up one good thing. <laughs> 
down the Cougars. And Braylon Parker, first and 10 for the 23. Parker's in the gun. He looks around. He's under pressure. He's going to roll to his right. He's going to throw it up to the corner, and he's going to take it out of bounds. Smart play by that young man to avoid the sack. Well, I'll tell you what, Danny. If you've been watching all night long with uh, these defensive backs for Wolfganetta, they've been all over the Cougars and not given him an opportunity to throw it downfield. You know, all of his passes that have been short. He's looked downfield. But he hasn't been able to find anybody down there because Wolfkin is doing just a great job in their secondary tonight. That'll bring up second and 10 from the 23 with 11.06 to go. Wolfkin continues to lead 41-13. Parker's in the gun. There goes Bills in motion off to the right side. Parker looks across the defense. He's going to sling it out to Bills, and it just goes out of the outstretched hands, and there's a flag comes in. It looks like it could be another holding penalty. That's really hurt them tonight, too, as those holding has. penalties have come at the wrong. Now, there's not a right time for a penalty, but these have really been hurting them. That'll bring it to the 11-minute mark, second and 10 on the 23. Yeah, these penalties have hurt them. In fact, they, they get a little momentum. They get a little bit you know, like they're going to make some gains, and then boom, they're pushed back again. Here goes Parker in the gun as he looks across the uh, grass here to throw the ball. He's under heavy pressure. He's going to throw it deep down the middle, and he's going to be picked off at the one-yard line. Caleb Moyer playing defensive back, and he could be hurt. Uh -oh. he, he took a vicious shot, uh, he's and he up. is getting up. But you just wonder how long they're going to keep that young man in the game. Caleb Moyer, the quarterback, playing center field there on defense. And let's see what they do here. That'll bring up. I, I think he'd have been, and I think his dad will tell him, he'd probably been more served to maybe knock it, knock it down. That, maybe knock it down, but uh, it, was, it, it wasn't fourth down, so. And they're going to, it looks like they're going to take him, are they going to take him out of the game or is he going to come back in? He's over there talking to the coaching staff. He's going to come back in the game, so he, he looks to be doing okay. Yeah, he said, I'm all right. Coach. Yeah, that's right. I'm tough. You raised me right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, again, there's another example of it. You know, Parker going back. He's looking downfield, looking downfield. Secondary's got everybody covered. He finally says, I got to throw it down there. I can't keep throwing to the sidelines. First and 10 from the two-yard line. They're going to hand the ball off to Nals up the middle and just trying to get a little breathing room. I thought maybe they'd let Moyer keep it, but after that collision there on the defensive side of the ball, maybe they want to give him a chance to catch his breath. So they give it to Nals, and Nals comes up the middle for a gain of about a yard. Maybe that'll put it at the three-yard line, second and eight. They're going to call it two yards from the two. Moyer really hasn't carried it, I think, only a couple times tonight right. you know, where it's truly carrying the ball himself. Clock continues to run, 10-17. Moyer's going to go under center. He's got Nelson Schneer in the backfield with him. He's going to hand the ball off to Schneer off the left side. And they get a little breathing room, maybe uh, another two-yard gain. I'll take it over about the six-yard line, bring up third and probably about four. Let's see if uh, they make it third and six on the four-yard line. Let's see if they uh, call a little conservative here, maybe keep it on the ground. And I think you would. I mean, you don't want to make any mistakes right here, you know. You, clearly, you got, yeah, clearly in control, Beach, yeah. He's gonna come in. He can boom at 38 yards or more down the field, you know, to get you out of this, this right here and put Van Wert back into, you know, deep field position again. But, you know, you just don't want to make any mistakes. That's the biggest thing. There's Moyer, he'll go under center, and he'll hand the ball to Nouse. Nouse get a block. And he is close to a first down. I don't know if he got it. Let's see. Yeah, they're they're saying him. he did. Yep. Another frost roofing first down. Look, we talk about luxuries all night. We talk about Kyle Beach. We talk about Caleb Moore. What a luxury at third and six to give it to your tailback, and he just pounds it up the middle. Boy, he's a strong kid. I'll tell you, he, he's, we've seen that tonight where he's moved the entire pile by himself sometimes. But that's huge, you know, when you got a, a third and six, and you can hand it off to him. And, Again, give credit to your offensive line for opening up some holes for him. So 8.47 to go. Clock continues to run. If they, if they go the length of the field, it'll be a 98-yard drive. Now, we're putting the horse, or the, excuse me, the cart before the horse, but uh, the way this offense has been clicking, there's Schneer for a gain of about four yards. 
Well, not only that, it's the time, too. You, you know, you go to the length of the field, you're going to eat all a lot of time the rest there, of this yeah. fourth quarter. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So a big night tonight for the Wapakoneta Redskins. Everything clicking as they come into Van Worden with eight minutes to go here in this game. They lead 41 to 13, and you got to think the rest of the WBL is going to take notice of this game. Oh, this was a you know a flawless performance so far. Absolutely, so far that's by a great point. You know, offensively, defensively, you know, few penalties. They had a couple earlier on, but they've settled down on those. And a big hit, and the ball gets popped loose. And the ball comes loose, and it looks to me like they haven't gave a signal yet. But Jace now has got hit hard, and Van Wert recovers. Oh. Van Wert recovers at the 22-yard line. A big break for the Cougars. Yeah, and one they really needed, but you're right. Jason House just got hammered there. He's been he's been handing out the punishment all night, <laughs> and for one time the Cougars really laid the wood to him. It's almost like they were standing in the huddle. You know, <laughs> we know where that one's going. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they've got to score, and they got to score quickly. They can't use up a whole lot of time to get these points. 7.50 to go. Parker's in the gun. He's got two to the left, one to the right. He's going to hand the ball off to Bills. Bills tries to find some daylight nope. and taken down by big number 64 on the play. And that is Caden Ware. We've called his name oh, so many yeah, times tonight. I'll tell you what, he comes off that defensive end position just as good as anybody I've seen. I'll tell you what, the defensive scheme for Wapakoneta has been fantastic. Oh, you has. shut down a high-powered offense like this, averaging, you said it earlier, 42 points a game, and they have done an incredible job. Yeah, just flawless in offense, defense. Oh, look out. Gee, oh, my whiz. goodness. And there you saw number 35, Schneer, come in, and he hit the quarterback hard. I didn't even see him anywhere, and he just flew out of the middle. Nobody put it put a pad on him as he came through that line, you know, just, you know, like a heat-seeking missile, just heading right for Parker. Parker was just able to get rid of it just, to, you know, at the last second. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Third and seven from the 20. Parker's going to throw off to the right side. and just goes outside of these stretched out arms of the intended receiver, number two, Reese Krug. Well, and he's had to deal with that all night long. He has. Brylon Parker has because he's had to throw over the outstretched arms of those. That's a guys. great point. You yeah. Know, and, and he's going to throw it a little bit high. When he's not throwing his sidearm to try to get it around him when they go up in the air. You know, he's had to try to throw over him, and that's not easy. And, you know, Dar, I know the, the good folks here on the home side are disappointed in this performance tonight, but I'm telling you, this coaching staff will get it right, and this this is a playoff team, Van Wert. This is a playoff team. They've got all kinds of weapons, and they, they average a lot of points, and they'll get it together. Yeah, they just got to get, you know, their, their defense a little sounder, you know, a little more aggressive on their defensive plays. You know, those kind of things because and they can't give up 31 points a game, that's for sure. And that's been their 41. Achilles, yeah, absolutely. There's another flag on the play. That'll push the ball back, make it fourth and 12. Well, yeah, you, your offense is averaging 42 points a game, but you can't go out there every game and try to outscore the other team. There's Parker in the gun. He's got trips to the left. He's going to keep himself as he goes across the line of scrimmage. He's going to throw the ball into the end zone, and he just misses on Bills. Bills was guarded out there by Ryan Richardson. A good-looking sophomore out there as he's on the defensive end of that play, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Nice attempt there by Bills, though, but yeah, that's a tough catch if he would have been able to make it because he had to turn around and almost crossed his body to get that. And for the first time tonight, Dar, we're seeing some of the home folks uh, grab the blankets and uh, head for the exit signs. We hope you don't leave. We'd like to stick around for the end of the game here. Got 6.36 to go. Well, depending on where they're parked out here, <laughs> they may be, be walking for a while. <laughs> could too, be. So. Uh, <laughs> Superintendent Mark Bagley stopped in earlier, and uh, we laughed about that when he said, uh, working on a lot of parking issues, working on some uh, press box issues, but so far so good at their, their uh, project they're doing. It's a beautiful place. Here comes Jace now. Says he's got a bunch of space out there. And a nice job, an open field tackle by number six, Spencer Clay. Jason Nelson was wanting a face mask, and I'm not real sure he didn't deserve one because it looked like he had him by the face mask. Yeah, and the referee was sitting right there, too. So he says, nah, we're not going to call that. You know, 
Yeah, you're up you 41 said to 13. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was, like I was pointing out, trying to make what the damn word is, you can't, you know, you're averaging 42 points a game. You can't come into every game thinking I can, I'm going to out right. point right. the other score. team. Yeah, that's right. You know, right. I've got to get my defense together. You know, we got to work on some things and we got to shut down and, and lower that number. There's another connection between Moyer and number 11 for the Redskins, Cade Page. That's double digit catches for Page tonight. That's number 10. He's had a fantastic night tonight. Yeah, particularly because he came in only with 13 catches in the first <laughs> four games. I yeah. mean, they found a new weapon in Wapak. <laughs> Totally caught uh, Van Ward, I think, a little bit for, for, yeah. by surprise because I really don't think they were expecting Caden Page to have that big of a game or be that big of an impact. Well, partner, this will move the Wapakoneta and the Redskins to 3-2 and two overall, 3-1 and one in the WBL. That will put them right up there with Elida at the top of the WBL standings. There's Jace Nouse goes across the middle for about five yards. Van Wert will fall to 3-2, and two, but the big point here tonight is Van Wert falls to 2-2 two and two in the WBL, putting them a game behind Wapakoneta in defiance. Yeah, and I haven't mean, talked about WBL. It's such a great league as it is, you know, but, you know, every and a hard-hitting Oh, I mean, goodness. these guys, you know, lay it out there every game, and they put it all out there on the line. But, you know, that's a big, big win here tonight for Wapakoneta, no doubt about it, but a big win in several different facets. And, you know, not only the fact that they won the game, but the way they won the game, the way they ran their game plan, the way their quarterback played tonight, throwing in a couple extra, you know, new weapons for them and Caden Page and also their, their tight end getting involved in the game as well. And there's tailback having an outstanding game. So that every facet of the game, which is what, you know, Travis Moyer, you know, one of his keys coming in this game is we have to execute on a high level on all phases of the game. Yeah. Well, they did that tonight. Absolutely. They should be very proud of the game plan they put together because they were absolutely dominant tonight as the clock slides under four minutes here until the end of this one. Our instant replay didn't sponsor tonight, Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley Real Estate has been our instant replay sponsor. Here's Moyer as he fakes the pass, and he's going to go down the right again. side. And he's got Caden Page. Oh, oh the only uh, mistake Caden Page has made all night as it goes through his arms, and uh, if he catches that one, he's got another touchdown. But the other thing, too, with this long kinetic win tonight is, you know, this gives when other coaches, you know, and other teams in the WBL watch the game, the, the film on these guys, now they got to worry about more than just you know, oh, a couple sure, of things. Sure. They got to worry about, you know, Paige. They got to worry about the, the tight end. They got to worry about the defense and how they played tonight for Wapakoneta. So there's a lot of, you know, positives that they got in this game. So Kyle Beach is back in punt formation. A low snap, a nice job of Kyle Beach handling it. He booms it. My goodness, he just booms it. And a fair catch is made, and they're going to throw a flag on that play because the Wapakoneta defender ran right into him even after the fair catch was made. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jared Mullen back there maybe for Wapakoneta. Our red zone sponsor tonight has been B&B &B Auto Repair. Rely on Van and his team of expert technicians to provide excellent service. Call 419-738-8090 for your auto repair needs. Lots of sponsors tonight. And lots of great sponsors for these high school football games and a great partnership between the area businesses and WSN. Oh, absolutely. You know, and this is always a classic between these two oh, teams. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> we had one of the best high school games last year, and our buddy Garrett Seawright was on the call for that game, and the blocked punt, an incredible performance by both schools. And I remember Garrett had it on his Twitter page. That was his, uh, you know, his big thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so here comes Parker and the Cougs with 3.36 to go, and they're trying to get back in this one. They'll hand the ball off to the first man up the middle. Gets a gain of about three yards. 16, Gary Hillary on the carry. Number 16, Gary Hillary with the carry. Run down by four, Ryan Walter. I think uh, Lopkin has made some changes. Yeah, I was going to say. Because I don't see Moyer out there anymore. Yeah, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of substitutions and uh, guys that are getting some quality playing time here on the turf at Van Wert. Good for both these schools. Recognize, uh, get those guys in here and get them some quality time. And a quarterback change for Van Wert as soon as I get a number here. 
He keeps it himself. And he's going to pick up maybe a yard. I can't see the number. It's quite a few <laughs> away from us here. 39, number 39 for the Van Wert Cougars. I don't have a 39 on the roster, Jacob. <laughs> but you are correct, that is number 39. Hand the ball off up the middle. 16, Gary. Gary Hillary on the carry for about two yards, make it third and five. 31 yard line with 2.12 to go. Clock continues to run. We got fourth and four. Cougars will go into punt formation. Yeah, Cougars just basically, you know, running the time down, trying to get out of here. Regroup for next week's game. Five, Gage Steeman into punt. Gage Steeman into punt for the Cougars. Punt is up. Goes to about the 40-yard line. Well, that'll be fair caught out there by number 20 for the Redskins. Ryan Richardson, the sophomore defensive back, catches it. And that's where Wapakoneta will start out with 1.43 to go. I just wonder if they're going to run anything here or maybe take a knee. I don't believe Van Wert will stop the clock at this point of the game. No, I don't think so either. So, so partner, a great performance tonight by Wapakoneta. Uh, sum up what you've seen from the Redskins tonight. Well, like I said, you know, a lot of positives out of this one. They did hit, you know, they did everything right on you know, all phases of their game. Uh, they threw in a couple of wrinkles that I'm sure a lot of teams weren't expecting. Well, we weren't expecting, yeah. Caden Wirt with with Caden Page, and you saw some good running by the, you know, by the running back, but great performance by their quarterback, and that just shows his maturity at this level. Absolutely, and he's getting better and better as he goes along. You know, he's only a sophomore, you know. And he had an outstanding game. He read the defense well, he threw the ball well. You know, he kept everything under control, you know, and, and pretty much managed the game the way that it should have been managed. And so that's a lot of positives to take forward as you get into the rest of the season. We're already halfway through the, the regular season, which is phenomenal. I don't even know how that happened, but, you know, so he's got the rest of the season to go through. And I think it, this the Walpock team's going to have some, some you know, reckoning for other teams. And you, you take a look at Keith Recker's squad, you know, a, a, a bittersweet defeat here uh, to to a really good team. What does Coach Recker say to his kids after tonight's loss? Well, you got basically that. You got beat by the, a team that was better than you tonight, but you got to go out and you got to execute next week. We can't, we can't dwell on this. We got to make some changes. We got to make some adjustments. We got to be able to, you know, our, our receivers have got to get open more. They got to get downfield faster. They got to, you know, get some openings downfield. Um, we got to we got to block better. You know, there's a few things like that. But you know, don't let this game determine what happens the rest of the season. I mean, you know, we just got beat by a better team tonight than what we played, and that and let's just take it that and go on from there. So with 30 seconds to go, we'll get one more kneel down. And that will pretty much do it. So the Wapakoneta Redskins come into Van Wert to Eggers Stadium, and they put up 41 points as they win 41 to 13. An impressive victory by the Redskins. And uh, they're well on their way to another appearance in the playoffs. <laughs> no, absolutely. I and mean, both these teams will be in the playoffs. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. You know, uh, and you're looking at, again, Van Wert, a senior-laden team. You know, these kids are veterans. They're experienced. You know, they're, they're not going to let this be the end of their season right here. They're going to pick it up next week. You know, and, and I would not be surprised to see Van Wert come out next week. And I'm not sure who they're playing next week. But, you know, and just, you know, put on a dominating performance then. So that'll wrap it up from Van Wert High School for Darn Evergo. I'm Danny Holbrook and our entire WOSN crew. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on WOSN.